Hi everyone, do you know what masking fluid is? Well, in today's video, it's all about masking fluid. Welcome to Nishad Karam Art, I'm Nishad Karam. Enjoy. So here guys, I have uh, two types of masking fluid. Uh, this first one is a rowney masking fluid that comes in a bottle and this is one of the more common ones. And then I have uh, the Schmick brand, which is more for fine detail as it comes with a really uh, really thin or fine nip so you have a range of uh, ways in which you can apply it but both of them basically does the same job I prefer this one because you can always pour out from the bottle and then you can use your various applicators and so on to <coughs> arrange on the paper in terms of the image and how you want to get it uh, sorted and so on so just a few things to remember when using masking fluid. So as the name suggests, it basically masking fluid acts as a resist to prevent paint from getting into areas that you don't really want it to. And as the name suggests, it masks or protects the area on the paper where it is applied. So yep, two different types here, guys. I remember a couple of years ago, um, I did this postcard based on a winter scene it was some christmas postcards i had done and if you look in the foreground here these sort of like white uh, bits of bush shrubs if you may and you can see there it sort of jumps out against the dark background so that's where i use some of the masking fluid to help me achieve this effect and masking fluid is really good for uh, this sort of use in terms of when you're working with silhouettes and so when you need bright areas uh, or contrasting areas, especially when you're working with positive, negative, bright on darks and so on. So masking fluid is really good for that. Now, a couple of important things to bear in mind when using masking fluid is really key to plan out the spaces where exactly you intend to use the masking fluid. Because you wouldn't want to, uh, once you apply the masking fluid, that is going to protect that part of the paper and nothing else, uh, no paints, hopefully if applied properly, wouldn't get into that space. So it's good that you plan out exactly how and where you don't want the paint uh, to get onto the image that you're creating. Uh, the other thing with masking fluid is, it's you need to handle it with care because masking fluid once exposed to air, it coagulates really quickly, its lumps uh, start to form and sometimes it becomes difficult to work with because it dries really quickly. So that's why with me, when I'm using this, I like to basically pour out some and then I can apply however I want. Um, using really old paint brushes and old, old twigs and so on because what happens is this, it gets so thick and it can ruin your brushes. So sometimes hog hair brush, old hog hair brushes uh, are sometimes the best one nylon brushes are not really good because the the bristles they don't really hold the the liquid the masking fluid too well so you're limited in terms of the way you can apply the fluid itself so I always try to use the end of old paint brushes bits of old pointed sticks and, and um, toothpicks and a variety as you say as you use it more often and you get accustomed you build a bit more experience with it um, it becomes a bit more easier to use and apply. The other thing with using masking fluid is that you must try to keep your paper dry once you've planned it out because once the if your paper is wet and you apply masking fluid then uh, you risk paint uh, going into those sort of moist areas so try to keep your paper dry only when, until you've applied it and it's dried properly then you can apply your washes and so on and the other thing to keep in mind is obviously when you're removing it that you remove it carefully it does hold on to the tooth of the paper really tightly and sometimes if you're removing it if you don't remove it with care then you can remove large chunks of paper and you could remove even piece of your painted areas or image uh, along with it so just a few things to keep in mind when you're cleaning your brushes, if you are using brushes and you don't have access to various other old materials to apply the <coughs> masking fluid, sorry, then make sure that you use soapy water. Soapy water can get rid of the, the extra uh, masking fluid from on whatever brush or whatever you're using to apply. So again, 
try to keep soap, soapy water at hand and if you're using directly from the bottle make sure and cover the bottle properly because again uh, air exposure to air is basically uh, masking fluids be nightmare it's its enemy so just keep it away from open air and you need to work a bit quickly when applying it so I'm just going to show you a few uh, different ways in which we can um, apply masking fluid I'm just going to do quickly a couple examples so just to quickly demonstrate guys I'm just going to put together a simple uh, sort of like let's say some foliage some leaves uh, trying to get the effect of uh, leaves in the background and a few that I want to uh, mask off so that they sort of stand out in the foreground maybe a bit of uh, reeds some bushes coming across a mixture of dark and light greens and I also want to get some of the reeds sticking out so just basically I know that I would want to have uh, some reeds coming up like this in different directions yeah. I might even want to actually have some some leaves like that maybe some smaller ones like this that I want to mask off um, even like here I would like to mask off those maybe even like here maybe I might want some even some thin uh, bits as well So make sure, remember you're planning it, you're laying it out. I might even need some, I'll just put some lines as well to pretend as the sky there. And yeah, just to keep it really simple. So in these areas that I know, I want to sort of like keep the color of the paper at that neutral white. I'm going to use some of the masking fluid, even with some of these reeds, and mask off these. And then we'll apply the wash. So let's look on so I'm using very old my son's old paintbrush and I'm going to also use the back of it and also the bristles so I'm going to simply start off with these little leaves here that I want to cover and I'm just going to show you um, I've poured out some here I'm just applying that. I'm going to apply some, some thin lines, maybe like there. So just to help speed up the process, I'm going to use my uh, hair dryer, blow dryer, so I'll like get this dry quickly. Yeah, so now I can start putting down my washes. So you can see as it's dried, it does sort of change color a bit. And you can see some nice little areas here, like that could be like reeds, some little marks in the sky, some little bits of uh, leaves and so on there that could be standing out in terms of the foreground, a bit of bright ones. So I'm going to do a bit of dark green with some leaves in the back, bit of a blue sky just to make up a sort of... Uh, easy composition just to show you how the masking fluid works so let's see if we can apply some paint on there now and come up with a composition
bit more dark areas in it so that we could get those greens popping out on the mask areas. Let's just dry up that bit. So, that's dried and you can see the areas here where the masking fluid was applied earlier. And I could already see like these areas here, even like here, where these bits are going to be white standing out from the dark so really you have the sort of like positive and negative space the contrast is there or will be there so let's start and just roll out maybe let's see this little area here so i'm just going to start by rolling all this area here and again again be careful i'm just going to roll still a bit wet and you can see Again, you don't want to pull out much. And you can see how bright that area is. And even though I've just I just apply this uh really quickly the effect it's quite impressive actually again just pulling all of these here then you can always go back and rework rework the image yeah. for example if you just come back in here and basically just rework this area here Positive negative space to add back some color in here. Here, maybe. That looks really awesome. So there guys, there you have it. Uh, it's a simple way of using masking fluid, just a few examples in terms of uh, protecting the areas of the paper where you don't want the paint to go. Uh, of course with a bit more practice and more experience you can use this in a range of different applications and different settings, different types of this landscape, portrait, uh, I mainly use mine for when I'm using my reeds and my foliage and so on, especially for areas in the foreground. So, hope you enjoy, guys. So, there you have it, guys. If this video was of any value to you, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell to receive more videos like this one. Enjoy.